You are welcome to another video of Juniper Jonas Associate course. In this section, we will talk about static routing and specifically Juniper static routing concepts. First, we'll go through some routing concepts as a whole and then pay attention to some concepts and terminologies specific to Juniper devices. This section is dedicated to theoretical concept of static routing and in the next section, we will start to implement these concepts in Juniper devices. First, I must emphasize that I am assuming that students taking this course already have a reasonable understanding of Cisco CCNA course and I will only review the concepts. We'll start with the concept of routing. To better understand it, let's review and compare the operation of switches and routers. As you know, switches that usually route traffic based on destination MAC addresses look up MAC addresses in MAC address table to find outgoing interface. And if there is no route in MAC table, traffic is still forwarded or flooded in all interfaces. In other words, computers connected to switches can always communicate to each other even if there is no route in any switches. Unlike switches, routers which forward traffic based on destination IP address must find outgoing interface and next hop IP address in the routing table. Otherwise, the traffic is discarded. In other words, computers and network cannot communicate with each other through any router until the route to those network is already configured in the routers. For example, in this figure, router 1 needs to know that the route to destination 172.16.2 is via router R2 with the address or next hub address 10.10.10.2. Router R2 also needs to know that route to the destination 172.16 one one is through router one with the next hub IP address ten 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 one. Otherwise, these two networks one hundred seventy two sixteen one and two cannot communicate with each other. Routes to destinations can be statically configured in the routers, or they can be created dynamically using routing protocols such as OSPF and. BGP. The problem with static routing is that it's not scalable in the large networks since you have to configure many routes in different routers. Worse, every time there is a topology change in the network, we have to manually update the routes into the routing table. Otherwise, the communication will be disrupted. These are the benefits of dynamic routing, first, even in large network, it dynamically creates routes in the routers. And when there are topology changes, the routes are updated dynamically and as quickly as possible. In our example, the path from R1 to 172.16.2 is through primary link with router 2, with the next hub IP address 10.10.10.2. But when the link fails, the path must be changed to the secondary links with router R2 with the IP address 202022, 20, as I have shown here in routing table. In static routing, routing table must be changed manually, but in dynamic routing, it will be updated dynamically and through routing protocols. In this course, we will talk a little about dynamic routing, but they are mostly discussed in Juniper Enterprise routing and switching courses. There is a very basic and very important rule in the routing that every network engineer must know it. If the destination address of a traffic on a router matches with more than one route in the routing table, which path will be selected to forward the traffic? In the example, you can see that the traffic with destination 
72621 must be forwarded through rotor R1. In rotor R1, there are two routes matching the destination IP address. All traffic with destination address in the subnet 172.16.2.24 is forwarded using the above link 10.10.10.2 10, 10, 10, and all traffic with the destination address 172.16.2.1.32 is forwarded through the link below with the next hub address 20.20.20.2. 20, 20, 20, Traffic with destination address 172.16.2.1 is matched with both routes in routing table. And now the question is which path will be selected to forward the traffic. The keyword most specific route or route with longest prefix match or route with the largest subnet mask length matching destination address is the answer of this question. In other words, the road with the longest match will be selected to forward the traffic. In the example, the link below is selected to forward traffic because all 32 bits of the destination IP address are matched with the route pointing to the 202022 as the next hop address. This rule can be useful to reduce the number of routes in the routing table since we don't need to add a route for every destination in the network. The most practical application of the longest prefix match rule is the default route, which is our next discussion. One a special route in the routing table is default route, matching with any destination address or 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 slash 0 which will be matched with every destination address. Default route has the lowest priority because the subnet mask length is 0 and it is the shortest possible subnet mask length. The default route is primarily used to route internet traffic instead of writing a route for each destination on the internet, traffic to any internet destination is matched against default route. Another concept in routing is route preference or administrative distance. When multiple routes for exact the same destination is created in the routing table through static or dynamic routing protocols, then you cannot choose the route based on the longest prefix match rule since they are exactly the same. In the example, the route to the destination 192.168.1 is learned using both a static and OSPF routing protocol but using a different path. Which route must be selected to forward traffic to destination in this subnet? Every route has an attribute which is called route preference or administrative distance. In such a situation, the route with lowest preference or administrative distance value will be selected to forward the traffic. Every protocol has a default route preference value as it is shown in the table but it can be changed manually. By default, connected and aesthetic routes have the lowest preference or highest priority compared the routes learned by other routing protocol. So in our example, the route aesthetic with administrative distance or route preference 5 will be selected and prioritized compared to OSPF routing protocol. One of the beautiful application of route preference is static route redundancy. It is also called floating static in Cisco terminology and qualified next hop in Juniper terminology that we will discuss in continue. There are some routing concepts in Juniper that are somehow different with Cisco or at least the terminology is different. 
Now we are going to discuss some of these concepts. As we have already discussed, one of the application of route preference is a static route redundancy. That means we can have two static routes for the same destination, but with different route preference value. Then the route with lower route preference value is used to route traffic to the destination as the primary pass. And if that fails, the second route with a higher route preference value is used as the backup pass. Here is 32, not 3. It's a syntax mistake. This concept can also be used in Juniper devices with one difference. In Juniper, you cannot use two different preferences for the same destination even the next hops are different. Instead, in Juniper, you have to use keyword qualified next hop instead of next hop for the secondary routes. We will implement this scenario in the next section. And the last concept that I'm going to talk about in this video, in Juniper devices like Cisco devices, we have the terminologies routing table and forwarding table. In Cisco, only the best routes are kept in the routing table. And a copy of routing table with a few changes, which is out of the current discussion, is also kept in the forwarding table. Finally, forwarding table is used to forward the traffic at data plane. But what is different is that in Juniper, all routing information, whether it is best or not, is stored in Juniper device routing table. In other words, in Juniper, routing table is routing information database. And unlike Cisco devices that only best routes of different routing protocol are kept in the routing table, in Juniper devices, all routing information are kept in the routing table. As an example, in Cisco devices, when two static routes with different preference and exactly for the same destination are configured, only one of them with lower preference is appeared in the routing table, as you can see in this figure. But in Juniper devices, you can see both of them in Juniper routing table. This is the difference of routing table between Cisco and Juniper devices. In the next section, I will show you practically Juniper routing table and forwarding table and the difference with Cisco devices.